Requirements Sources When discussing requirements elicitation, many fall into the trap of considering the stakeholders as the only source of requirements. Requirements have many sources in typical software. So, all possible sources must be recognized and evaluated. Actually, missing any of the requirements sources could cause harm to the project. According to the CWI book, we have six primary requirement sources. Goals, domain knowledge or domain requirements, stakeholders, business rules, the operational environment, and the organizational environment. Let us talk about each one of them in detail. We will start with goals. The term goal, sometimes called business concern or critical success factor, refers to the software's overall high-level objective. Here we are talking about defining what would make this project a success early in the project. As we said, what is the critical success factor? Many organizations spend time creating what is called a feasibility study. A feasibility study is a short, focused study to assess a proposed project or system's practicality. It aims to objectively and rationally uncover the strengths and weaknesses of an existing business or proposed project, opportunities, and threats present in the natural environment. It also provides a high-level idea about the resources required to carry through, and ultimately the possibilities for success in its simplest terms. The two criteria to judge feasibility are cost required and value attained. Software engineers need to pay attention to estimate the value and cost of goals. The feasibility study is a relatively low-cost way of doing this. Goals such as the feasibility studies should be our primary source of high-level requirements. The second point we have is domain knowledge. Analysts need to acquire or have available knowledge about the application domain. Domain knowledge provides the background against which all elicited requirements knowledge must be set to understand it. With domain knowledge, one can tell whether a requirement has been missed or conflicts with other requirements. You would understand the language of the stakeholders and you would be able to negotiate the requirements and prioritize them. The third source of requirements is the stakeholders. Stakeholders. We have talked about the stakeholders in a previous video. One of the many reasons the software can be unsatisfactory is to stress the requirements from one group of stakeholders than the others. The software engineer should be careful while identifying, representing, and managing the different stakeholders' viewpoints. Business rules. Every business includes rules that represent the guidelines and the constraints of the business. For example, in a university registration system, students who still have unpaid tuition from the last semester can't register for new courses in the next semesters until all the remaining tuitions are paid. Business rules, unlike domain knowledge, are specific to the company or the business. The fifth source is the operational environment. Software's requirement could be extracted from the operational environment where the software will be executed. Requirements could be, for example, timing constraints in real-time software or performance constraints in a business environment. Such requirements must be considered carefully because they can significantly affect software feasibility, cost, and restrict design choices. The last source mentioned in the CWI book of requirements is the organizational environment. Every organization has its own structure, culture, and internal politics. Developing software for an organization requires the software engineer to focus on these in order not to force unplanned change in the business process. I would like to add to the previous sources, technology as a new source. New products are often developed to take advantage of technological developments since their competitors were launched. If you understand the latest technology, you can add relevant requirements to your system to take advantage of it.